Well, residents who want a safer environment for themselves and their pets are pushing back against a decades-long practice of using pesticides to control bugs and weeds. It all stems from some mysterious illnesses and deaths in dogs that may be tied to toxic chemicals in the environment. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears continues her special report on pet sickness in Summerlin. Let's yes, up. Yes. This is Mowgli the Rottweiler in better days. He has always been a very active dog. We used to take him hiking and he'd play fetch. And he loved like having sticks in his mouth like any normal dog. This is Mowgli now at just four years old. He is having a really tough time um, walking, getting up from like a seated position. When tests at the vet couldn't pinpoint a cause, Nick and Danielle began to suspect something in the environment in their Summerlin South neighborhood. When we would walk him down to the park, you know, down to Summerlin Center or even just in our neighborhood park, like we would see them spraying all the time, having no idea what it was. Mowgli's reaction in April after landscapers sprayed an herbicide near Danielle's back fence. Mowgli started to drool, he started to cough and throw up. Prompted her to ask the Summerlin HOA what they were spraying. They gave her these packets for Roundup and Speed Zone, toxic chemicals with lots of rules about how the products must be used. Do not apply this product in a way that will contact any person or pet, either directly or through drift. Speed Zone's label also has a warning not to spray near drainage ditches. This dual-use recreation area that runs right behind Danielle's backyard and through many Summerlin neighborhoods also serves as a drainage ditch. The Nevada Department of Agriculture took samples in this area after Danielle filed a complaint. State investigator Ray Saliga. The primary concerns of our investigation process are to evaluate the possible misuse of pesticides. The state did not take any samples in Summerlin parks. Investigators took a total of seven samples from Danielle's yard, along her property line, and between her backyard and the walking path. The results were released July 11th in this report. Lab analysis did not detect the active ingredients in Speed Zone, but in four of the samples, they did find glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. Lab results showed relatively insignificant amounts of glyphosate near Danielle's property line and on foliage growing through the fence. The lab detected significant amounts of glyphosate on samples between her yard and the walkway. I think the bigger picture here is trying to find an alternative so that we can have a healthier park and area to be around. The makers of Roundup sent a statement saying glyphosate has been used to safely control problematic weeds in public areas for more than 40 years. Glyphosate has been thoroughly examined by independent experts at regulatory authorities to ensure approved uses of the product are safe for people, the environment, and other non-target plants and animals, including pets. But the Environmental Protection Agency says pets may be at risk of digestive or intestinal problems if they touch or eat plants that have just been sprayed. And the National Pesticide Information Center says animals exposed to glyphosate herbicides have displayed anorexia, lethargy, hypersalivation, vomiting and diarrhea, as well as heart rate problems, loss of muscle control, collapse and convulsions. A 2012 study from Tufts University's Cummings School School of Veterinary Medicine found that the use of professionally applied lawn care pesticides raised the risk of lymphomas in dogs by 70 percent. The study does not indicate which pesticides, but according to the authors, exposure to 2,4-D, the primary ingredient in Speed Zone, has previously been implicated in canine cancer. The makers of Speed Zone declined to comment for this story, but provided an industry task force document citing its own studies and stating 2,4-D is not an animal carcinogen. What about the environmental impact? Summerlin residents aren't convinced, and they told the HOA as much in a special meeting called to address their concerns in May. You know, you may say it's unsubstantiated, but I think it's pretty like common knowledge that all these chemicals are not good for anybody involved. Danielle Eiferman lost her seven-year-old border collie Louie to a mysterious illness. I'm here because I'm very curious about the whole situation and what happened with my dog was really weird. I, I went to several vets, they have no idea what happened and it happened when I moved here. As for the Nevada Department of Agriculture, the agency's action comes after a similar process played out in May in Oceanside, California. 
According to this article in the Coast News, residents of one HOA community worried their pets had been poisoned by pesticides after dozens of dogs and cats reportedly fell ill and many died. The article says the animal's illnesses began after the HOA hired Brightview Landscape Services, which is the same company that services Summerlin using some of the same pesticides. The article says San Diego County officials investigated and citing in part a lack of veterinary medical reports, determined there was no correlation between the dog's illness symptoms and pesticide activities. A Brightview executive highlighted that in the Summerlin Council meeting, emphasizing that they've never misapplied products and saying they have a clean record. Brightview said only 6% of Summerlin parks are treated with pesticide and they use the least amount possible to control weeds, but they agreed their landscape teams need to revisit notification practices. There definitely needs to be communication, like broad communication. I would say even post it at the park where we have the rules up for keeping your dog on a leash and picking up after your dog. The Nevada Department of Agriculture's report did note violations of state law by another pesticide company working for the Summerlin HOA because of records that do not clearly state the total amount or concentration of pesticide applied. Summerlin Vice President Randy Eklund told residents in that May 26th meeting that they've put all pesticide and herbicide applications on pause with their landscaping companies as they investigate residents' concerns. Again, we take this very seriously and uh, we want to make sure that uh, if we're going to start moving forward, it's with uh, a better uh, sense of next right step. The council sent us a new statement on July 13th. It reads in part, as we prioritize the health of our residents, their pets, and the surrounding environment, we continue to proactively evaluate weed control strategies in our parks and community spaces. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.